Regular meeting number 25 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Let us pray. O oh God of goodness and love, look kindly on the members of Columbus City Council who meet in session this evening. As they consider the improvements to the infrastructure of our great city, help them also to be aware of the other needs of the citizens of our city, particularly the needs of the poor, the elderly, the homeless, the voiceless, and little children, all of those who cannot speak for themselves. May these members continue to support the men and women of our armed forces, as well as the efforts of those who care for our city and our zoological gardens, so that all of us can appreciate the beauty and the wonder and the diversity of all of God's creation. May the efforts of those who race for the cure for breast cancer find in you, Lord God, a compassionate and healing presence, ever ready to give comfort to the afflicted. Send your blessings upon the members of this council and the citizens of our city so that all of us can work together for the good of all. Amen. Craig Klein, Miller Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not at this time. Are there any resolutions or announcements from members of council? Council Member Craig. Not this evening. Council Member Klein. Thank you, President Ginther. I uh, have one resolution before I begin due to just the sensitivity of having zoo animals here in chambers. Uh, we do have a piece um, of legislation tonight in Rec and Parks. It's an annual uh, uh, piece of legislation that we have re regarding the zoo. And uh, every year we're fortunate enough to have Dale Schmidt and his team come down with some zoo animals. So please come forward and introduce the animals you have. I see you're carrying a kangaroo and I saw a uh, a python earlier and a penguin. There's the python. Can't miss that one. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having us again. Um, my name's Dale Schmidt. I'm the director of the zoo. I have Ingrid here as a gray kangaroo. She's about eight months old. Um, and next to me is Tommy Dodge. You might recognize that last name. Uh, he has Mango, which is a uh, albino Burmese python, weighs about 45 pounds. And uh, we have Calvin over here, and Calvin has Toddy. Toddy is a palm civet. If you remember the movie, The Bucket List, Palm Civet Coffee, that's Toddy. <laughs> Most expensive coffee you can buy. Beautiful animals from your beautiful zoo. Uh, thank you, and mm -hmm. certainly feel free to, to pass the animals around <laughs> council members. <laughs> I think Council Member Mills wanted to hold the snake. <laughs> oh, look how far back she is. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, he, you know, Council Member Klein did touch the snake even though he was scared. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to hold the snake, Council Member Mills? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions or comments? Because I know that it's kind of time sensitive with, mm -hmm. with the animals being down here about the annual appropriation that we have with the zoo. Mm -hmm. 
Well, certainly, thank you for coming. We're excited uh, about our relationship mm -hmm. um, and, and what we do in conjunction with the taxpayers mm -hmm. um, at the zoo. It, it really is a world-class zoo, one of the best, if not the best zoo in the world, and that's just not hyperbole. It really is. It really I mean, it really is, is ranked number one. It's the mm -hmm. greatest. Uh, so thank you so much for coming down, and have a great night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. And then to move to, you can scoot up, Councilmember Mills. <laughs> uh, uh, my resolution tonight is um, 97X2012 to recognize the Ohio machine of Major League Lacrosse for its 2012 inaugural season. Uh, and I'm going to, um, one second, <laughs> going to ask the representatives from uh, the Ohio machine lacrosse, anyone, I know Bruce, do you want to, Mr. Wimbush, why don't you come up too for all the work that uh, the Greater Columbus uh, Sports Commission has done. But this is the first season who kicks off their game this Wednesday, um, which they'll be celebrating in their, uh, who do you all have on Wednesday, first game? We've got a, uh, we've got a bicentennial event on Wednesday. Oh, that's right, the, the event is, is on Wednesday, and then your first game is? It'll be on Saturday night against the Rochester Rattlers. Ro against Rochester. Uh, and the Ohio machine will represent Ohio with the best lacrosse players in the world, competing against seven other teams, including Boston, Charlotte, Chesapeake, Denver, Hamilton, Long Island, and Rochester. So please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about the Ohio machine, and we're certainly excited that Central Ohio is represented in Major League Sports, especially lacrosse. Thank you all so much for having us. My name is John Algy. I'm the President and General Manager of the Ohio Machine. To my left here, I've got Megan Danner, our Director of Public Relations and Operations, and Bruce Wimbish, the Director of Marketing for the Greater Columbus Sports Commission. We've got a great event coming up this week uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we've got the uh, inaugural season launch party event on Columbus Commons. Um, we're looking to set a world record for the world's largest lacrosse game right on the Commons lawn. We've got a great <laughs> event with food trucks and live music. Um, we're going to have, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to have live music. Uh, we've got a food truck. Is that a little better? I apologize. Um, it be a great event during lunchtime, so we're looking forward to having people out for that. Uh, and then on Saturday, we're, uh, we've got the honor and the privilege of representing the great state of Ohio and the city of Columbus in our first ever home game at Selby Stadium uh, against the Rochester Rattlers. And we're just looking forward to continuing our partnership here and uh, growing the great sport of lacrosse uh, throughout the region, throughout Ohio, and in the Midwest. Megan or Bruce, do you have anything to add? He covered it pretty much. Well, thank you so much for coming down. Congratulations and good luck on the upcoming season. I want to invite all the people here in Chambers as well as those listening and watching on TV to come this Wednesday to the Commons and celebrate the machine's inaugural bicentennial kickoff event. I move for passage. Second. Craig Klein, Miller Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. President Pro Tem Miller, Councilmember Mills, Councilmember Bailey, Councilmember Tyson. Yes, I have one resolution this evening. It's, it's resolution 0101X-2012, and I'm going to ask the um, Bishop, oh no, I'm going to ask the um, Pickerington High School Central Tigers to walk to the podium, and um, they have the, the principal, Zach Howard, the assistant coach, Aaron Woody, and the coach, Jerry Francis, to come to the podium. The resolution reads, to honor and to recognize the Pickerington High School Central Tigers for winning the 2012 OHSAA Division I Boys Basketball State Championship. Whereas prior to this year, the Pickerington High School Central Boys basketball team had not won more than 12 games in a season since 2004. And whereas while the basketball program has improved steadily since the hiring of coach Jerry Francis in 2010, the team drew attention from some impressive victories early in the regular season. Few expected the young Tigers, who had never before appeared in a state tournament, to contend for the state championship this season. Whereas Coach Francis' emphasis on hard work, humility, toughness, and teamwork was reflected in the solid play of his team as they won the Ohio Central 
Ohio Capital Conference and captured their first district championship since 2002. And whereas in their run through the state championship tournament, the Tigers proved that they could play and play any style of ball and win any type of game as long as they played as a team. And this was never more apparent than in their gritty, grinding 45-40 to victory over Toledo Whitmer in the state championship game, played before nearly 10,000 fans at Value City Arena on March 24th of 2012. And whereas Coach Francis, his talented assistant coaches, the school's athletic department, and the Pickerington Central community have laid the groundwork for a basketball program that will be a force to be reckoned with within the years to come. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby honor and and recognize the Pickerington High School Central Tigers for winning the 2012 OHS AA Division I ba Boys Basketball State Championship. I move for passage. Craig Klein, Miller Mills, Paley Tyson, President Kinther. Thank you so much. Coach Francis, the podium is yours. Again, thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank uh, Mayor Coleman and City Councilman uh, Tyson and everyone involved for inviting us here today. As far as our guests, we have our principal, Mr. Zach Howard, here as well as supporting the boys and our assistant coach, Mr. Aaron Woody. And uh, i tell you right now, this is a good looking group of guys, so I apologize for my appearance. So, uh, <laughs> so please, let's give them a round of applause again. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. But, uh, don't, coach Fred, don't step away okay. quite yet. A couple things, I always want to commend you because he was just here maybe less than two, about two months ago. He was here because um, the fourth grade, the fourth grade team from, I think it's AAU, was that right? Mm -hmm. AAU, they won the, their national championship. Mm -hmm. And so we commend you again on that and then being here again, um, winning another championship this year. And I also just want to state that he is a Bishop Worley Gradley mm -hmm. graduate as well as um, played for the Ohio State University's basketball team. So we congratulate you on all that you have accomplished with your career and also what you, how you have motivated this team with your coaches and with the principal and the administrators to be able to be a winning team. Um, I don't want you to walk away until you've at least let each of the young men have an opportunity, since they are state champions, to be able to introduce themselves and so that their parents can see them here and uh, be so excited. No, you don't want oh, to? Oh, no, no, Councilman. Member Tyson, uh, I really appreciate that because we just had our cookout uh, Saturday, and the kids said I talk too much. So I'll be more than happy to let the boys introduce themselves. <laughs> so, okay. Go ahead and start with Chad. Thank you. Okay. And Coach Coach Francis, if each of the uh, men could also share with us where they're thinking about going to school and maybe what they're thinking about studying. Good job. I'd be interested Thank in that so. as well. Now I've added oh, you're some pressure. You're going to love a couple of these. So. I, now that adds okay. some pressure. Um, I'm Chad Nelson. I'll be attending Ohio Dominican University, and I'll be um, studying sports management. Hi, I'm Darryl LeVert, and I'm undecided. Um, I'm Taco Charleston, and I'm attending the University of Michigan. <laughs> I'm Von Tress Middleton, and I'm undecided. Rodney Cover Jr. and I'm undecided. I'm Corey Taylor and I'm undecided. undecided. I'm Kyron Boyd and I'm undecided. I'm Karis Lever and I'll be attending the University of Michigan to study in sports management. I'm Jay Shante and I'm undecided. I'm Connor Kern and I'm undecided. I apologize for all the guys who didn't figure it out yet, but we only have just two seniors, so. Uh, the rest of them are underclassmen still trying to figure it out. So. Well, thank you. I think you've just shared two of them are seniors and the rest of them are not. And that's why they're undecided. Because I'm sure under your leadership, they would have been decided by this point. So. Oh, yeah, we, we would have decided. But this Michigan thing, I'm trying to get that, get that turned around a little bit. So I'll get a call in to Coach Mata here soon. So. Yeah. Again, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And um, congratulations. <laughs>
Thank you, uh, Council Member Tyson. Tonight we're pleased to recognize Susan G. Komen, Race for the Cure, and I have for Council's consideration Resolution 0098X-2012, which honors the thousands of runners, walkers, and volunteers who will be giving of their time and money to help find a cure for breast cancer. Representing the Komen, race, Colum the Komen Columbus Race for the Cure is Connie Browning, President of the Komen Columbus Board. Connie, uh, Look forward to uh, welcome back to council chambers and Thank look you forward so to your uh, comments uh, in just a moment after I move for uh, adoption resolution 0098X 2012. Clerk, call the roll. Greg Klein, Miller Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Motion adopted. Uh, thank you, Connie, for coming tonight to uh, raise awareness not only of the ongoing fight to find a cure for breast cancer but to let people know how they can get involved, specifically the 2012 Columbus Komen Race for the Cure, which is being held uh, Saturday, May 19th. Connie? Yes, I'm very excited to be here tonight. I am very proud to say I am a lifelong resident of the Central Ohio Columbus area and a graduate of Columbus Public Schools. Now, this was with some controversy last time I said it. it was Eastmore High School, and I understand there were some rivals here, but maybe we can overlook that for now. No? All right. There, there just may be a few. I think that happened. And we did a great event uh, earlier last week with the uh, circus elephants, but let me say I'm glad the snake is gone. I really was thinking about leaving, and I, I didn't want to miss this opportunity. Um, I am very, very proud as a lifelong resident in my 50-some years here um, that we have such a great relationship with this city. We have, this is our 20th year racing in Central Ohio. We have grown from one of the smaller races to one of the largest in the countries, which means we raise money that stays right here in Central Ohio. 75% of what we earn and bring in is used for screening and local cancer uh, treatments for early detection in the Central Ohio area. The other 75%, or the other 25%, I'm sorry, uh, goes to cutting edge research and the Komen organization has been part of every major scientific breakthrough in breast cancer since, it, since its inception. We are very proud of that and very proud of the work that we've done here in Central Ohio and the partnership with this great city. You can still register tomorrow at Tuttle Mall from 10 to 9 and at Easton on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, 10 to 9, Thursday, Friday, 6 on, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 o'clock on Friday and the morning of the race at the Rife Center. So we have 38,000 people registered and still hope to meet our goal, break our record of 50,000. Thank you very much and I'm proud to be here this evening. I'm also a survivor, almost five years of a breast cancer survivor. So it's pretty important to me. Thank you, Connie, for coming down tonight. I do want to draw a special recognition to our communications director, John Ivanik, who's sporting some uh, good. Uh, oh, nice, John. I like that. Good, good pink look. locks for, yeah, for I everybody. I get the extensions because that's way too hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> want to uh, offer uh, council members an opportunity to make any uh, comments. Council Member Craig. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, President Ginther for offering uh, this uh, resolution. Uh, every year, as you know, uh, we've participated. And my wife, will be, she's, she's a seven-year survivor. That's great. Just had her exam uh, last week. And so uh, certainly uh, this is important uh, for all of the community. And I think the work that you're doing uh, continues to raise the, the awareness, um, the importance, not only of the event, but in the lives of the women, uh, grandmothers, mothers, sisters, and those that are affected by, um, affected by this, this dread disease. Thank you for all of your work. Thank you so much. Great words. Thank you, Connie, and I uh, want to present this resolution. Thank you for all that you're doing, and want to encourage our viewing and listening audiences uh, to get involved and support this race. And remember, early detection is a key factor in, in battling this, and appreciate everything you're doing for the community. Thank you so much.
there any uh, comments this evening from uh, city auditor city attorney make sure I'm not overlooking our municipal court judges I did that once and I won't make that mistake again uh, are there any uh, uh, requests by council members at this point uh, that eating ordinances be removed from the consent agenda for consideration Are there any uh, may we have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk so moved. is there a second clerk call the roll Craig Klein Miller Mills Paley Tyson president get there thank you will the uh, clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading Public Safety and Judiciary Committee Ordinance 755-2012, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 677 and 678-2012, Zoning Committee Ordinance 976-2012. The following ordinances appear in our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read the ordinance numbers of each into the record? Resolutions of Expression 99X and 103X, 102X-2012, Finance Committee Ordinance 574-2012, Development Committee Ordinance 967, 1004, and 1058-2012, Recreation Parks Committee Ordinances 867, 885, 970, and 994-2012, Technology Committee Ordinance 834-2012, Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 968, 985, Dash 2012 and resolution 95 X 2012 Public Utilities Committee ordinances 777 839 841 863 869 dash 2012 and appointments from the mayor's office numbered a 0074 a 0075 and a 0076 dash 2012 Thank you. May I have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent actions? Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll by voice. Craig? Yes. Klein? Yes. Miller? Yes. Mills? Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Yes, consent agenda carries. We'll now proceed with the second reading of 30 day tabled and emergency legislation. The first committee is the Finance Committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther. The first ordinance I have is 0949-2012. It is to authorize the Finance and Management Director to renew and to modify a contract with Cone, Inc. For, the, for maintenance and service of elevators in various city facilities under the purview of the Facilities Management Division to authorize expenditure of $205,357 from the General Fund and Construction Management Capital Improvement Fund and to declare an emergency. This is a fourth renewal of the five-year renewal provisions provided for within the initial contract. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. That's all the legislation that I have. I have um, two announcements. Thank you. The first is on this Thursday, May 17th, the Finance Committee will hold a hearing to discuss and review the city's first quarter finances. Finance Director Paul Rakowski, who was back from holiday, will present a report on the first quarter financial review. This hearing convenes at 5.30 in City Council Chambers. Community members who wish to address the Finance Committee at the hearing are welcome to submit a speaker slip at City Hall on Thursday the 17th. Also, I want to recognize um, two of our high schools. U.S. News and World Report has recognized two Columbus high schools as among the nation's best. Columbus Alternative and Centennial High Schools received silver medals in the fourth edition of the 2012 U.S. News Best High Schools list. Columbus Alternative ranked 49 in Ohio and 1,170 nationally, while Centennial ranked 101 in Ohio and 1,802 nationally. The rankings put Columbus Alternative and Centennial in the top 10% in the nation. Again, congratulations to the students, parents, faculty, staff, and school board members who make our school district as great as it is. Thanks so very much. That's all I have in my committees this evening. Thank you. Our next committee is the Administration Committee. Council Member Craig chairs that committee. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, President Ginther. Tonight in the Administration uh, Committee, I have uh, Ordinance uh, 1 
2012 to accept memorandum of understanding number 2012-01 executed between representatives of the City of Columbus uh, and American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, otherwise known as ASME, Ohio Council 8, Local 1632, which amends the collective bargaining, bargaining contract April 1, 2011 through March 31, 2014, and to declare an emergency. Article 32.3 of the collective bargaining contract with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Ohio Council 8, Local 1632, requires that any modifications to the contract be agreed upon, be agreed between the parties. Memorandum of Understanding number uh, uh, 2012-01 has been executed by the parties to amend a classification listing to adjust the pay ranges of the follow, following class titles. Fingerprint technician, senior uh, storekeeper, and to assign a pay range to the new classification of automotive tire repair supervisor. And also increase the minimum hourly rate for the following class titles. Education uh, program instructor and recreation instructor co to comply with state minimum wage law. Uh, if there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. That is all the legislation I have. I do have an announcement. May is National Military Appreciation Month. Designated by Congress, this national observance provides a period encompassing both the history and recognition of our armed forces with an in-depth look at the diversity of its individuals and achievements. It allows Americans to educate each generation on the historical impact of our military through the participation of the community, with those who serve uh, encouraging uh, patriotism and love for America. This month, gi month gives the nation a time and a place on which to focus and draw attention to our many expressions of appreciation and recognition of our armed services via numerous uh, venues and also to uh, recall and learn about our vast American history. National Military Appre uh, Appreciation month, month consists of Loyalty Day, observed May the 1st, Public, Ser Public Service Recognition Week, observed May the 6th through the 12th, Victory in Europe Day, observed May the 8th, Military Spouse Appreciation Day, observed May the 11th, Armed Services Week, uh, week observed May the 12th through the 20th, uh, Armed Forces Day observed, observed May 19th, Maritime Day observed May the 22nd, and Memorial Day observed May the 28th. This very important month honors, remembers, recognizes, and appreciates all military personnel, those men and women who have served throughout our history, and, and all who now serve in uniform, and their families as well, of those Americans who have given their lives uh, in events of our freedom, that the freedom that we all enjoy today. Thank you. That is all that I have this evening. Thank you, uh, Council Member Craig. Our next committee is the Recreation and Parks Committee. Council Member Klein chairs that committee. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Genther. Tonight in Rec and Parks 774 2012, to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into a contract with the Columbus Zoological Park Association to provide transportation, shirts, novelties for children from the Recreation and Parks Playground Program to the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium as part of the Melvin B. Dodge Summer Zoo Days and to declare an emergency. Uh, we had the animals here earlier, and uh, it's great to know that through this program, uh, approximately 2,000 kids that are going to be participating in our, um, our playground program will be able to be transported and enjoy the animals just like we enjoyed the animals tonight down here in City Hall. So it's a terrific program that uh, allows children that maybe sometimes never have the opportunity to go to the zoo to go to the zoo, and everyone you know, has fond memories, I'm sure, at some point or another um, that have had the opportunity to go to the zoo to, to enjoy the animals. Any questions or comments? I move for passage. Craig Klein-Miller, Mills Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. 
966-2012 to authorize the city auditor to set up a certificate in the amount of $232,202 for various expenditures for labor, material, and equipment in conjunction with park improvements to authorize the transfer of $214,702 within the Recreation and Parks Fund 702 to authorize the transfer of $17,500 within the Recreation and Parks Fund 746 to amend the 2012 capital improvement budget to authorize the expenditure of $232,202 from the voted Recreation and Parks bond fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, this, these improvements are for, uh, for basic park improvements throughout the city of Columbus and any questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. 971-2012 to authorize the expenditure of $77,504.71 from the Recreation and Parks Bond Fund 746, Governmental Build America Bonds, and $122,495.29 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund 702 for facility improvements to authorize the transfer of $765,335.9 $765,335.96 within the Recreation and Parks Fund 702 to amend the 2012 capital improvement budget and to declare an emergency. Director McKnight, what facilities are uh, going to be subject to this, this funding? I saw there's HVAC improvements. Yeah, Chairman Klein, President Ginther, members of council, like the previous ordinance, this is one that we use for a variety of improvements and facilities throughout the year. Uh, for example, we had a condenser stolen at one of our uh, recreation centers, Brent Nell, so we need to go out and buy and replace, have a contractor come in and install a new condenser. So those, these are those projects under $20,000, smaller projects that we can bid, and once we set these funds up, we can issue a purchase order throughout the year for these, this type of work as it occurs. Various facilities throughout Columbus. That's correct. Any question comments? I move for passing. Craig Klein, Miller, Mills, Bailey, Tyson, President Thur. That's all I have in Rick Parks. Thank you, Councilmember Klein. Our next committee is the Public Safety and Judiciary Committee. Councilmember Mills chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Kenther. Tonight in Public Safety and Judiciary, the following ordinance, ordinance number 0702-2012 to authorize and direct the city attorney to settle the case of Virgil E. Jo Jones Sr. versus Megan Finza et al. pending in the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas to authorize expenditure of the sum of $42,600 in settlement of this lawsuit and to declare an emergency. On April 21st, 2009, a city employee were ended Mr. Jones' vehicle and the city employee was cited for failure to assure clear distance. Um, this is uh, a, an opportunity for us to settle this case that um, city attorneys put forth. I'm allow him comments. City Attorney Pfeiffer. Uh, Chair Mills, correct. We are liable. The city is liable. One of our public utility employees did rear end a car. Uh, so the issue was how much money did we owe the person we hit? And through negotiation, it was determined that a fair number for both sides was $42,600. And I would urge council to approve this ordinance. Thank you. If there are no other comments or questions, I move for passage. Craig Klein, Miller, Mills, Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. That's all I have by way of legislation. We have two announcements if you allow me the opportunity, President Ginther. Thank you. First, I would like to announce to the community that this Sunday begins EMS Week, and I encourage our listening audience and our viewing audience um, to join us from 12 to 4 at COSI as we kick off the week. And this, the theme of this week is child injury prevention. And there's lots of learning, lots of activity to interact with our members of Division of Fire as well as police, and it's a fun time at COSI. There'll be many events throughout the week to understand the work of our EMS uh, system as well as the importance of child safety and child injury pre prevention. Um, secondly, I would like to thank all of the Division of Fire who responded, unfortunately, to a three-alarm fire yesterday. And the investment that the city has made in thanking all of the citizens of Columbus who has allowed us to invest in the necessary apparatus to respond to such fires is absolutely critical. We had the use of 60 
firefighters as well as 40 pieces of equipment that we have very diligently and intentionally invested in as a city in order to respond to fires such as this. And I want to say thank you to all of our first responders and safety forces who responded to such a, a, a tragic event yesterday and thank them continuously for their day in and day out sacrifices and answers to the call of duty. That's all I have this evening, President Ginther. Thank you, uh, Council Member Mills. Our next uh, committee is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. Council Member Paley chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther and Public Service and Transportation this evening. We have Ordinance 0879-2012 to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into a contract with John Aramo, Aramo and Sons Incorporated in to provide for the payment of construction, administration, and inspection services in connection with the Arterial Street Rehabilitation, Fairwood Avenue, Watkins Road, Coble Road project to amend the 2012 Capital Improvements Budget to authorize the transfer of monies within the Streets Highway Geo Bonds Fund, Storm Recovery Zone, Super BAB, BABS Fund, and Storm Sewer Bonds Fund to authorize the appropriation of funds within the Street and Highway Improvement Fund to authorize the expenditure of $2,297,400 $45.82 from the Streets Highway Geo Bonds Fund and the Street and Highway Improvement Fund for the Division of Design and Construction, $1,462,537.80 from the Storm Recovery Zone Super BABS Fund and the Storm Sewer Bonds Fund for the Division of Sewage and Drainage and to declare an emergency. This ordinance represents a very important infrastructure investment in our city's south side. This will continue to improve both safety and quality of life. This project is a reconstruction enterprise of Fairwood Avenue between Watkins and Coble Roads. It will include roadway reconstruction, sidewalk installation, both curb and gutter repair and ADA ramp additions as well as reconstruction. In addition to the work being done by public service, this is another example of intergovernmental coordination and cooperation. The Department of Public Utilities is constructing sewer lines and making storm sewer improvements. And I would like to thank both Public Service Director Mark Kelsey and Public Utilities Director Greg Davies, as well as the respective staff for the coordination and the cooperation in these efforts. These efforts result in such efficiencies in our city's projects but not only does this project represent intergovernmental coordination, but it also is an example of public-private partnership because Columbia Gas is funding the salvage of a gas line in this project. Thank you, Columbia Gas, for showing what great things can be done when the public and private sectors work together. The south side of Columbus is a very important neighborhood. This project shows our continued commitment to the vibrancy of the south side, and I urge your support of this of this ordinance. Is there any questions or comments? I move for passage. Craig Glenn, Miller, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Kinther. Next, we have Ordinance 0916-2012 to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into a professional service contract with HNTB Ohio for the design of the traffic signal installation Columbus Traffic Signal System Phase C project for the Division of Design and Construction to amend the 2012 capital improvements budget to authorize the transfer and expenditure of $1,100,000 within the streets and highway geo bonds fund and to declare an emergency. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Klein, Miller, Mills, Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. That's all I have in public service and transportation. I would like to move on to public utilities. In public utilities this evening, we have Ordinance 0421, 2012, to authorize and direct the Director of Public Utilities to accept and enter into an intergovernmental agreement with the Franklin County Emergency Management and Homeland Security Agency for a U.S. Homeland Security grant for the pur purchase of an installation of fiber optic cable at the Hapkermian Water Plant and to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to establish a contract with the Echo 24 Inc. to waive the provisions of competitive bidding for the Division of Power Water 
in the amount of $185,000 within the water grant fund and to appropriate the funds necessary to construct the project and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments? I move for passage. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. Next I have Ordinance 687, 2012, to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to enter into construction contract with the Complete General Construction Company in connection with the Mound Street I-71 sewer separation project and to authorize the transfer of funds within the Sanitary Sewer General Obligation Bond Fund and to authorize the expenditure of $1,554,000 $187.62 and amend the 2012 capital improvements budget. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Klein, Miller, Mills, Bradley, Tyson, President Ginther. That's all I have in legislation and just a, a, a small reminder for our friends in German Village, when you get done with the race for the cure, it's always a good time to go into the German Village. They are having their yearly garage sale, treasure hunt um, weekend this Saturday. So if you want to visit German Village this weekend, I, you'll probably see me down there. Thank you, President Ginther. Thank you, Council Member uh, Paley. Anything else to come before Council this evening? I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Miller, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Saying an adjournment. We have several uh, non agenda speakers and uh, we'll reconvene for zoning at six thirty. Regular meeting number twenty six will now come to order. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Is there a second? Clerk call the roll. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. Are there any communications and reports received by the city clerk? No, there is not. Are there any first readings, 30-day legislation? No, there is not. We will now go to the zoning committee. Council Member Miller chairs that committee. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther. In the zoning committee tonight, we have several items. The first one is 826-2012 to rezone 1140 Chambers Road, being 0.49 plus or minus acres located on the north side of Chambers Road. 700 uh, plus or minus feet west of Kenny Road from R Rural District to LM Limited Manufacturing District. The, um, the applicant is Westwood um, Cabinetry and Millwork LLC. Proposed use is limited commercial and manufacturing uses. It received a Development Commission recommendation for approval. The 5th by Northwest Area Commission recommendation for approval and also the City Department recommendation for approval. I have no speaker slips. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Lyon, Miller, Mills, Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. Next is 838-2012 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3363.19C location requirements and 3363.19. 27B2 height and area regulations of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1140 Chambers Road and permit uh, cabinetry and mill work in the LM Limited Manufacturing District with reduced setbacks with, uh, from residentially zoned property. Um, the applicant is Margaret O'Neill. Proposed use is allow cabinetry and mill work use adjacent to residentially zoned and the requirements setbacks. It received the 5th by Northwest Area Commission recommendation for approval and also the City Department recommendation for approval. And I have no speaker slips. I would like to first to request to amend as submitted to the clerk. Craig Glenn Miller, Mills Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. Next I'd like to move for passage. Craig Glenn Miller, Mills Bailey, Tyson, President Ginther. Next is 899-2012 to rezone 2525 and 2605 Roar Road, being 25.75 plus or minus acres, located on the south side of Roar Road, 230 plus or minus feet west of Allen Creek Drive from R Real District to M1 Manufacturing District. The applicant is Prasuti Companies. Uh, proposed use is industrial use. 
It received a Development Commission recommendation for approval, the Far South Columbus Area Commission recommendation for approval, and the City Department recommendation for approval. And I have no speaker slips. Next, I would like to move for passes if there are no questions or comments. Craig Glenn Miller, Ms. Paley Tyson, President Ginther. 935 2012 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permit, permitted uses, 3312.49 minimum number of parking spaces required, and 3356.11 C4 district setback lines of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 723 South Pearl Street to conform an existing single unit dwelling in a C4 commercial district with reduced development standards. The applicant is um, David Lewis. Proposed use is single unit dwelling. It would see the Brewery District Commission recommendation for approval and also the City Department recommendation for approval. I have no speaker slips. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. 956 2012 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.039 R4 residential district 3312.49 minimum number of parking spaces required 3332.05 area district lot width requirements 3332.14 R4 area district requirements 3332.18D basis of commuting area 3332.21 building lines, 3332.25 maximum side yards requirements, 3332.26 minimum side yard permitted, and 3332.27 rear yard of the Columbus City Coast for their property located at 770 East 4th Avenue to conform two existing single unit dwellings on one lot with reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Dable Applegate. Uh, proposed use, two single unit dwellings on one lot. It received the Italian Village Commission recommendation for approval and also the City Department recommendation for approval. And I have no speaker slips. Uh, I'd like to first to request to amend to emergency. Craig Glenn Miller, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Next, I would like to move for passage. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. And last, we have 983 2012 to rezone 880 Greenlawn Avenue, being 4.9 plus or minus acres, located at the northeast corner of Greenlawn Avenue and Greenfield Drive, from AR3 Apartment Residential and R Rural Districts to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is Ohio Hospital for Psychiatry, LLC. The proposed use is expansion of existing hospital. It received a Development Commission recommendation for approval and also the Franklin um, Area Commission recommendation for approval. And lastly, they did receive the City Department recommendation for approval. If there are no questions or comments, I'd like to move for passage with a voice vote. Second. Craig Klein Miller? Yes. Mills? Yes. Paley? Yes. Tyson? Abstain. President Ginther? Yes. And that is all we have in zoning tonight, President Ginther. Thank you, Chairman Miller. Nothing else to come before council this evening. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Miller, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. We stand adjourned. <laughs>